7.05, welcome in post-election Wednesday morning on KCMO Talk Radio, 95.7 FM. Hit that preset or stream us on the KCMO Talk Radio app. Download that. That way, as you uh, get your morning started, you can listen wherever you are, on your Google Home, on your Alexa, or right on the KCMO Talk Radio app. Welcome in. Uh, Rough night last night locally. Um, If you are a Johnson County Republican... If you're a Johnson County Democrat, well, you got a lot to celebrate coming out of last night. That is uh, indisputable. We've been talking about it throughout the morning. But as we hit the uh, 7 o'clock hour, I want to give you three winners and three losers uh, from last night in the elections. Which, by the way, not just locally, where we had some things on both sides of our state line. But you also had some national trends that came out of last night's elections as well that we'll weave into this. So uh, three winners from last night first off and it pains me to say it but abortion was a winner last night now of course that's an oxymoron um when i say that but in terms of being on the ballot in a post row world since roe got overturned abortion has been on the ballot eight different times in different states and abortion is eight for eight since Roe got overturned. That, of course, includes the value them both amendment that failed miserably here in Kansas last year. So abortion is an issue that if Democrats run on it and they use it effectively, they win elections. Eight for eight. Where else are you going to get eight for eight these days on anything? I mean, now that's there's a whole conversation to be had on that and why that's happening. But you when it happened last night in Ohio, which is a red state, which voted for Donald Trump by wide margins each of the last two elections. The abortion side won as they made that part of their state constitution, a right to an abortion in Ohio. So that issue, if Democrats are able to get their voters out around the issue of abortion, it is uh, going to work for them. And by the way, don't discount something like that being on the ballot in Missouri. I don't know when, but I could see that happening in the state of Missouri, where they get an initiative on the ballot to make abortion part of the state constitution, and it drives out big voter turnout for them. I'm just throwing it out there that I could see that happening at some point. The other big winner last night, and he was... No way part of what took place last night. But the other big winner last night has got to be Joe Biden. Because for all this talk about how he's old and he's doing a terrible job when it comes to, you know, the economy overseas and all that stuff at this point is pretty indisputable. Democrats, by and large, have continued to do better than most people would expect, whether it's in very local races like Overland Park or Lenexa City Council races Or if it's, um, you know, the governor of Kentucky, where the Republican uh, challenger lost to the incumbent Democrat in a red state. If you're Joe Biden, you got to be sitting back and saying, you know, I might be doing a bad job, but geez, I mean, we keep doing pretty well. We keep exceeding expectations in some of these elections as a party at large. I mean, it happened last year in the midterms. It happened again on a much more minor level this year. And this despite the fact that the guy who right now is the face of the party uh, has approval ratings under 40 percent. And that's like not a one off poll. There was another one yesterday. Reuters had a poll, which leans left, that had Joe Biden at 39 percent approval. But if you're Joe Biden, it's like, gosh, dang, 39 percent. But heck, we keep winning elections, baby. Let's go. So Biden, amazingly comes out of this thing probably with a little more confidence than he would have had two days ago going into next year. And the other big winner last night is uh, those of you who no longer feel like you want to get screwed on taxes in Jackson County. This was a big win uh, last night in Jackson County. Question one on the ballot, the no side won by 20 points, 60 to 40. And the question was as follows. And it was way too long of a question, so follow me here on this. But it's good the no side won. Shall Jackson County impose a local use tax for the purpose of financing road and bridge construction projects within the county, including projects within the corporate limits of cities within the county, 
for financial assistance to homeless persons and persons at risk of becoming homeless and for renovations and repairs to courthouses. It's a little longer than that, but that's the crux of it. And you in Jackson County said no by 20 points. So good on you because they frame the question as being for roads and bridges. But then, of course, in the middle of the question, it's like, hey, what about uh, financial assistance for homeless people and people at risk of becoming homeless? Hell, in this economy, we're all at risk of becoming homeless. So the no side won there by 20 points. And uh, that was good on you, Jackson County, saying, no, 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 no. If you want something for roads and bridges, ask me about roads and bridges. Don't sneak in these lines about, oh, by the way, for people at risk of becoming homeless. It's like, geez, you get to tax me in the homelessness at this point. Now, here are the losers. Uh, the losers uh, from last night, on a national level, Ronna McDaniel, she is the RNC chairperson who just continues to oversee loss after loss after loss. I mean, it's really bad. Um, Ronna McDaniel, I shared this tweet last night at Pete Mundo. Ronna McDaniel is the Matt Millen of RNC chairs. If you remember the name Matt Millen, he was the Detroit Lions general manager and president. <laughs> he was awful, and he kept the job forever. Mark's, Mark loves that sports reference in there. I do. Side story, I, I knew his daughter. Oh, really? Yeah. How so? I, I met her at a, a youth conference when I was in high school okay. through my church. Well, I'm sure he's a very nice man. Oh, yeah. But he was an awful GM. I don't know about that. Well, I, <laughs> he was a nice guy. Chiefs fans as a Raiders linebacker. Fair enough. Fair as enough. As a player, yeah. Okay. Literally, I saw him throw a baseball back into the stands at Arrowhead in when Bo Jackson came out to play, idiots were throwing those playground rubberized baseballs out onto the field. Matt Milne just picked one and chucked it back into the crowd. That's like, Whoa. <laughs> Look at these two guys. They got more commentary on Matt Millen this How morning than anything else. Yeah, and I'm awake now. Pete. <laughs> he <laughs> now was a terrible it. GM. Though. He was an awful GM. Yep. So Ronna McDaniel is the Matt Millen of RNC chairs. Uh, as Lions GM and president, Matt Millen went 31-84. and 84 before he got fired on September 24th of 2008. Had he remained the GM and president during the entirety of the Lions' 0-16 season in 2008, his record would have been 31-97. and That is Ronna McDaniel. She continues on as RNC chair and has done an awful job. But she keeps hanging on to the gig. And by the way, you know, just so you know, I mean, uh, Donald Trump is the guy who wanted her to stay on as the chair. And I don't get it. Nobody should want her as chair. Uh, common sense, unfortunately, um, ends up being a loser here locally. For those of us who wanted to see uh, a little more common sense when it comes to our taxes, right, to our municipalities, uh, trying to keep those revenues under control. You've seen Overland Park collect 30 to 40 percent more in taxes than just two or three years ago. And a lot of the people who are on the pro-tax side of things and love collecting all these tax revenues, they had big wins last night across Johnson County. And then, uh, thankfully, a uh, loser here is uh, amateur porn star Susanna Gibson. You remember this story? This Virginia Democrat who was running for a local House seat, she got national attention um, when it turned out she was uh, making videos with her husband on an adult streaming website and was soliciting tips on that website. So she got national attention for that. I want to say it was eh, two months ago, maybe. And she ended up losing her house race in Virginia. But I will give you some advice here on a Wednesday morning. I was trying to remember her name just a few minutes ago before we came back on the air. <laughs> and I'm like, what is her name? The Virginia. Uh, and I, I did something I, I regret doing on the work computer here. I Googled. Virginia amateur porn star candidate to try to get her name to come up on Google. Uh -huh. And needless to say, Google did not respond how I thought it was going to respond. The search is turned off. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, so I am, I am calling the mea culpa here right now. That was a dumb thing to put on Google in the work computer, but I was just trying to get her name. So HR the time where we can say he was on the show. I was on the show. We can pinpoint your location. I am saying it on the show <laughs> that I was trying to find the name Susanna Gibson, and I googled Virginia amateur porn star candidate, and it totally backfired on me. So that's all I got. I know how that can happen. I was telling Marks I was when I was dating my now wife, 
she refers to herself as Mimi in the grandmother way. She's Mimi, right? And so I had made some reference about, oh, hotmimi.com. And as soon as I hit send on my text, I set the URL link, go oh. active. So that's why I'm not the Shawnee city manager. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and you're no longer in consideration either. So. Well, if this is my last segment on the show, you know why. <laughs> Oh, man. So there's three winners. There's three losers from last night. Um, And I could go on and on and on about that. 913-408-7957.